Amiodarone, Wikipedia article audio. Amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic medication used to treat and prevent a number of types of irregular heartbeats. This includes ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and wide complex tachycardia, as well as atrial fibrillation and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It can be given by mouth, intravenously, or intraosseously. When used by mouth, it can take a few weeks for effects to begin. Common side effects include feeling tired, tremor, nausea, and constipation. As a meodoron can have serious side effects, it is mainly recommended only for significant ventricular arrhythmias. Serious side effects include lung toxicity such as interstitial pneumonitis, liver problems, heart arrhythmias, vision problems, thyroid problems, and death. If taken during pregnancy or breastfeeding it can cause problems in the baby. It is a class 3 antiarrhythmic medication. It works partly by increasing the time before a heart cell can contract again. Medical Uses Cardiac Arrest Amiodarone was first made in 1961 and came into medical use in 1962 for chest pain believed to be related to the heart. It was pulled from the market in 1967 due to side effects. In 1974 it was found to be useful for arrhythmias and reintroduced. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. It is available as a generic medication. In the developing world the wholesale cost as of 2014 is about 0.06 to 26 cents per day. In the United States a typical month supply is between 100 and 200 US dollars. Amiodarone has been used both in the treatment of acute life-threatening arrhythmias as well as the chronic suppression of arrhythmias. It is used both in supraventricular arrhythmias and ventricular arrhythmias. Defibrillation is the treatment of choice for ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia resulting in cardiac arrest. However, amiodarone has been used in shock refractory VF. The 2010 guidelines of the American Heart Association included amiodarone as a second-line agent. They believed that amiodarone was more effective than lidocaine in VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. A 2016 review, however, found that amiodarone did not improve survival or positive outcomes in those who had a cardiac arrest. Amiodarone may be used in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia in certain instances. Individuals with hemodynamically unstable ventricular tachycardia should not initially receive amiodarone. These individuals should be cardioverted. Ventricular tachycardia Amiodarone can be used in individuals with hemodynamically stable ventricular tachycardia. In these cases, amiodarone can be used regardless of the individual's underlying heart function and the type of ventricular tachycardia, it can be used in individuals with monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, but is contraindicated in individuals with polymorphic ventricular tachycardia as it is associated with a prolonged QT interval which will be made worse with antiarrhythmic drugs. Individuals who have undergone open-heart surgery are at an increased risk of developing atrial fibrillation in the first few days post-procedure. In the ARCH trial, intravenous amiodarone has been shown to reduce the incidence of atrial fibrillation after open-heart surgery when compared to placebo. However, Clinical studies have failed to demonstrate long-term efficacy and have shown potentially fatal side effects such as pulmonary toxicities. While amiodarone is not approved for AF by the FDA, 
it is a commonly prescribed off-label treatment due to the lack of equally effective treatment alternatives. Atrial fibrillation So-called acute onset atrial fibrillation, defined by the North American Society of Pacing and Electrophysiology in 2003, responds well to short-duration treatment with amiodarone. This has been demonstrated in 17 randomized controlled trials, of which five included a placebo arm. The incidence of severe side effects in this group is low. The benefit of amiodarone in the treatment of atrial fibrillation in the critical care population has yet to be determined but it may prove to be the agent of choice where the patient is hemodynamically unstable and unsuitable for DC cardioversion. It is recommended in such a role by the UK government's National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence. Women who are pregnant or may become pregnant are strongly advised to not take amiodarone. Since amiodarone can be expressed in breast milk, women taking amiodarone are advised to stop nursing. Contraindications it is contraindicated in individuals with sinus nodal bradycardia, atrioventricular block, and second or third degree heart block who do not have an artificial pacemaker. Side effects Individuals with baseline depressed lung function should be monitored closely if amiodarone therapy is to be initiated. Lung Formulations of amiodarone that contain benzyl alcohol should not be given to neonates, because the benzyl alcohol may cause the potentially fatal gasping syndrome. Amiodarone can worsen the cardiac arrhythmia brought on by digitalis toxicity. Thyroid Amiodarone has numerous side effects. Most individuals administered amiodarone on a chronic basis will experience at least one side effect. Side effects of amiodarone include various pulmonary effects. The most serious reaction that is due to amiodarone is interstitial lung disease. Risk factors include high cumulative dose, more than 400 mg per day duration over two months, increased age, and pre-existing pulmonary disease. Some individuals were noted to develop pulmonary fibrosis after a week of treatment, while others did not develop it after years of continuous use. Common practice is to avoid the agent if possible in individuals with decreased lung function. The most specific test of pulmonary toxicity due to amiodarone is a dramatically decreased DLCO noted on pulmonary function testing. Induced abnormalities in thyroid function are common. Both under and overactivity of the thyroid may occur. Amiodarone is structurally similar to thyroxine and also contains iodine. Both of these contribute to the effects of amiodarone on thyroid function. Amiodarone also causes an antithyroid action, via wolf chakoff effect, due its large amount of iodine in its molecule, which causes a particular cardiac hypothyroidism with bradycardia and arrhythmia. I Measurement of free thyroxine alone may be unreliable in detecting these problems and thyroid stimulating hormone should therefore also be checked every six months. Liver Thyroid uptake measurements, which are used to differentiate causes of hyperthyroidism, are generally unreliable in patients who have been taking amiodarone. Because of the high iodine content of amiodarone, the thyroid gland is effectively saturated, thus preventing further uptake of isotopes of iodine. However, the radioactive iodine uptake may still be helpful in the diagnosis and management of amiodarone-induced hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism occurs frequently, in the SAFE trial, which compared amiodarone with other medications for the treatment of atrial fibrillation 
biochemical hypothyroidism occurred in 25.8% of the amiodarone treated group as opposed to 6.6% of the control group. Overt hypothyroidism occurred at 5.0% compared to 0.3%, most of these were detected within the first six months of amiodarone treatment, hyperthyroidism can also occur. However, in the SAFE trial, the increased rate of hyperthyroidism was not statistically significant. Most hyperthyroid patients were asymptomatic. Amiodaron Thyroxine Cyclosporin, digoxin, flecainide, procainamide, quinidine, sildenafil, simvastatin, theophylline, warfarin. Corneal microdeposits also called vortex or whorl keratopathy are almost universally present in individuals taking amiodarone longer than 6 months, especially doses greater than 400 mg slash day. These deposits typically do not cause any symptoms. About 1 in 10 individuals may complain of a bluish halo. Anterior subcapsular lens deposits are relatively common in higher doses after six months of treatment. Optic neuropathy, nonarteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, occurs in 1 to 2 percent of people and is not dosage dependent. Bilateral optic disc swelling and mild and reversible visual field defects can also occur. Loss of eyelashes has been linked to amiodaron use. Skin Neurological Epididymis Gynecomastia Abnormal liver enzyme results are common in patients on amiodaron. Much rarer are jaundice, hepatomegaly, and hepatitis. Low-dose amiodaron has been reported to cause pseudo-alcoholic cirrhosis. Long-term administration of amiodaron is associated with a light-sensitive blue-gray discoloration of the skin. Such patients should avoid exposure to the sun and use sunscreen that protects against ultraviolet A and B. The discoloration will slowly improve upon cessation of the medication, however. The skin color may not return completely. Long term administration of amiodaron has been associated with peripheral neuropathies. Amiodaron is sometimes responsible for epididymitis, a condition of the epididymis, and is normally associated with bacterial infections but which can also occur as a non bacterial inflammatory condition. Amiodaron accumulates in the head of the organ and can cause unilateral or bilateral inflammation. It tends to resolve if amiodaron is stopped. Some cases of gynecomastia have been reported with men on amiodaron. A study published in 2013 showed a possible association between amiodaron and an increased risk of cancer, especially in males with a dose-dependent effect. Cancer Amiodaron is extensively metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P4503A4 and can affect the metabolism of numerous other drugs. It interacts with digoxin, warfarin, phenytoin, and others. The major metabolite of amiodaron is desthylamiodaron, which also has antiarrhythmic properties. The metabolism of amiodaron is inhibited by grapefruit juice, leading to elevated serum levels of amiodaron. On August 8, 2008, the FDA issued a warning of the risk of rhabdomyolysis, which can lead to kidney failure or death, when simvastatin is used with amiodaron. This interaction is dose dependent with simvastatin doses exceeding 20 mg. This drug combination especially with higher doses of simvastatin should be avoided. The pharmacokinetics of numerous drugs, including many that are commonly administered to individuals with heart disease, are affected by amiodarone. 
particularly, doses of digoxin should be halved in individuals taking amiodarone. Metabolism Interactions Excretion Amiodarone potentiates the action of warfarin by inhibiting the clearance of both and warfarin. Individuals taking both of these medications should have their warfarin doses adjusted based off their dosing of amiodarone, and have their anticoagulation status and international normalized ratio measured more frequently. Dose reduction of warfarin is as follows. 40% reduction if amiodarone dose is 400 mg daily, 35% reduction if amiodarone dose is 300 mg daily, 30% reduction if amiodarone dose is 200 mg daily, and 25% reduction if amiodarone dose is 100 mg daily. The effect of amiodarone on the warfarin concentrations can be as early as a few days after initiation of treatment, however, the interaction may not peak for up to seven weeks. Amiodarone inhibits the action of the cytochrome P450 isozyme family. This reduces the clearance of many drugs, including the following. In March 2015, Gilead Sciences emailed warnings to healthcare providers about nine patients that began taking its hepatitis C drugs Harvoni or Savaldi along with the heart treatments Amiodarone, Bristol Myers Squibb S. Daklin Za, or Johnson & Johnson S. Olicio developed abnormally slow heartbeats and one died of cardiac arrest. Three required a pacemaker to be inserted. Gilead said the combinations aren't recommended and product labels will be updated. Excretion is primarily hepatic and biliary with almost no elimination via the renal route and it is not dialyzable. Elimination half-life average of 58 days for amiodarone and 36 days for the active metabolite, desethylamiodarone. There is 10 to 50% transfer of amiodarone and DEA in the placenta as well as a presence in breast milk. Accumulation of amiodarone and DEA occurs in adipose tissue and highly perfused organs. Therefore, if an individual was taking amiodarone on a chronic basis, if it is stopped it will remain in the system for weeks to months. Amiodarone is categorized as a class 3 antiarrhythmic agent, and prolongs phase 3 of the cardiac action potential, the repolarization phase where there is normally decreased calcium permeability and increased potassium permeability. It has numerous other effects, however, including actions that are similar to those of antiarrhythmic classes IA, 2, and 4. Mechanism of Action Amiodarone slows conduction rate and prolongs the refractory period of the SA and AV nodes. It also prolongs the refractory periods of the ventricles, bundles of his, and the porcunier fibers without exhibiting any effects on the conduction rate. Amiodarone has been shown to prolong the myocardial cell action potential duration and refractory period and is a non-competitive SS adrenergic inhibitor. It also shows beta blocker-like and calcium channel blocker-like actions on the SA and AV nodes, increases the refractory period via sodium and potassium channel effects, and slows intracardiac conduction of the cardiac action potential via sodium channel effects. Amiodarone chemically resembles thyroxine, and its binding to the nuclear thyroid receptor might contribute to some of its pharmacologic and toxic actions. The original observation that amiodarone's progenitor molecule, Kellen, had cardioactive properties, was made by the Russian physiologist Gleb von Anrep while working in Cairo in 1946. Kellen is obtained from a plant extract of Kala or Amivis naga, a common plant in North Africa. 
Anrep noticed that one of his technicians had been cured of anginal symptoms after taking Kellen, then used for various, non-cardiac ailments. This led to efforts by European pharmaceutical industries to isolate an active compound. Amiodarone was initially developed in 1961 at the Labaz Company, Belgium, by chemists Tonger and Binon, who were working on preparations derived from Kellen. It became popular in Europe as a treatment for angina pectoris. As a doctoral candidate at Oxford University, Brahma Singh determined that amiodarone and sotalol had antiarrhythmic properties and belonged to a new class of antiarrhythmic agents. Today the mechanisms of action of amiodarone and sotalol have been investigated in more detail. Both drugs have been demonstrated to prolong the duration of the action potential, prolonging the refractory period, by interacting among other cellular function with K and channels. Based on Singh's work, the Argentinian physician Mauricio Rosenbaum began using amiodarone to treat his patients who suffered from supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias, with impressive results. Based on papers written by Rosenbaum developing Singh's theories, physicians in the United States began prescribing amiodarone to their patients with potentially life-threatening arrhythmias in the late 1970s. By 1980, amiodarone was commonly prescribed throughout Europe for the treatment of arrhythmias, but in the U.S. amiodarone remained unapproved by the Food and Drug Administration, and physicians were forced to directly obtain amiodarone from pharmaceutical companies in Canada and Europe. The FDA was reluctant to officially approve the use of amiodarone since initial reports had shown increased incidence of serious pulmonary side effects of the drug. In the mid-1980s, the European pharmaceutical companies began putting pressure on the FDA to approve amiodarone by threatening to cut the supply to American physicians if it was not approved. In December 1985, Amiodaron was approved by the FDA for the treatment of arrhythmias. This makes amiodaron one of the few drugs approved by the FDA without rigorous randomized clinical trials. Amiodaron may be an acronym for its IUPAC name ethoxy 35 diiodophenyl methan one where AR is a placeholder for phenyl. This is partially supported by droned aron which is non-iodinated benzofuran derivative of amiodarone, where the AR ilmethan 1 is conserved. Amiodarone is available in oral and intravenous formulations. Orally, it is available under the trade names Pacerone and Corderone. It is also available under the trade name Array Tac in Australia and New Zealand and further in Australia under the brands Cardinorm and Rhythmic as well as a number of generic brands. Also Aricor in South Africa. In South America, it is known as Atlanzel and is produced by Roemers. History Name In India, Amiodaron is marketed under the brand name Takara. It is also available in intravenous ampoules and vials. The dose of amiodarone administered is tailored to the individual and the dysrhythmia that is being treated. When administered orally, the bioavailability of amiodarone is quite variable. Absorption ranges from 22 to 95 percent, with better absorption when it is given with food. Dosing Amiodarone 4 should be administered via a central venous catheter. It has a pH of 4.08. If administered outside of the standard concentration of 900 mg 500 ml it should be administered using a 0.22 micron filter to prevent precipitate from reaching the patient. Amiodarone 4 is a known vesicant. For infusions of longer than one hour, do not exceed concentrations of 2 mg ml unless a central venous catheter is used. 
Administration.